guys. Fish on, baby. Right, we are off. We have just arrived at Long Quarry. Well, the parking, but anyway, it's a bit of a walk. Um, yeah, so I'm going to bring you along with me today. Uh, it is raining at the moment. It's meant to stop around 7 o'clock, so it says. We've got a southeasterly turning northeasterly this afternoon. About 12, 12 mile per hour, gusts up to 20. So it is going to be a little bit windy and uncomfortable, but that's fishing. Um, sometimes on those days you get the better fish, sometimes you don't. We've yet to get a monster for the video. I mean, we did, we've done all right. We've had a nice, um, I can't remember now, it's like eight or seven pound husk off of uh, Hope's nose. Um, obviously, we are in Southwest again. Southwest Devon! Um, yeah, just outside of Torquay, Babacan Way. If you type in Long Quarry online, you'll find it. Um, so, yeah. Obviously, we are going down cliffs, guys. I mean, so make sure you're wearing stilettos. I mean, it's just common sense, isn't it? Don't want to be slipping in that. <laughs> um, yeah, and remember... It's only fins, not only fans. So see that subscribe button? Bosh. Give it a little slap and it's free. You don't have to pay. And you don't have to explain to your wife or husband why you've got it either. Right. Anyway, I'm going to get out of the car, grab the gear, get down there, and I'll bring you back when we're on the bank. See you in a bit. on the mark. Um, I've decided to fish the left hand side. Um, I will give you a little little tour in a minute. Just got to put some new shock leaders on. Um, there are people camping and fishing on the left hand side. So I didn't want to, uh, as it is half six, seven in the morning, I didn't want to go wake them up. Um, I've never fished this side, so I'm not sure what the ground's like. If I start losing loads of gear, a little bit later on, we'll go down over to the right hand side. Because up there, there's a, you can fish into a big sand bay down there. Obviously, the wind, the wind's the wind, isn't it? Not too bad yet, but it could get worse later. The sea's very choppy. So, um, hopefully, we can, it, it stays fishable. If not, we'll have to call it a day, but hopefully we'll get a few fish out. Right. I thought I would quickly show you. I know a lot of you already know how to do it, but it is what it is. We're going to do it anyway. First of all, you have to actually get your main line. A little bit windswept, see? Right, so this is how I tie a shock leader knot. Main line, double it back. Give yourselves about a foot, just to play with. Right, the doubled over line, cross it over on itself, so you end up with like a loop. The big loop you have, I'll just go through three times. So it looks like that. Bit of lube on it. Pull this loop so it's level. Nice and tight. And that will leave you a loop that you can attach your shock leader to. Right, so if you just take the scissors, Trim that tag end off. You have to do it quite close because you don't want it to uh, <clears throat> interfere with your eyes as you're casting. Take your shock leader. I use 70 pound shock leader. It's the highest lead I ever, the biggest lead I ever used is a seven. Unless you're up the channel and you've got to use something a little bit heavier, but 
seven's enough. Right, so you go through the loop, pinch at the base of your shock leader that's gone through the loop, and that creates this loop, loop here on the other side. So you go round four, five times, three times, it's up to you. I'll go with five. Back through the loop. Pull that one down, so it'll look like that. All right? Bit of loop. Grab both ends. That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> right, let's start again. Right, that's probably because where it cracked off the time before, the line's not great. So, if we cut that. Remember guys, keep hold of all this line and put it back in your box. At the end of the day. Right, back over on itself. Through the loop. Pull tight. That might actually be because I cut the tag end off before I pulled it tight. Jumped the gun a little bit. But we all make mistakes. That's why we're here to learn. Right. Back through, one, two, three, four, five. Back through again, hit loop, pull. Hopefully it doesn't snap. Ah. Yeah, so I think it's just because I pulled the tag end a bit short and it slipped. Yeah, so that ain't coming off. Anyway, trim it down now. Bye bye, bye bye, tag ends. Bosh. Right, and there you have it. Nice and tight. So we're going to reel that on about five turns of the reel. Leave enough length to attach your, your rigs that you've made or bought or whatever. And then, yeah, we'll put one out. Hopefully, we'll get a few bites on camera today. Uh, conditions are obviously a lot different to the world the other day. It was nice and sunny. It is raining and uh, very cloudy. So, get these ones rigged up, send a few baits out, and uh, I'll bring you back. See you in a bit. Back on your old five foot. Five foot pulley panel bay with a pair of size fives. If you're after some scissors, no promo here or anything, but uh, Big Trev at Wrigglers, I grabbed a pair off him yesterday. I had to pop in there to grab some bait for today's session as I was running low. Um, I've actually got some bait today. I've already got some pre-made wraps that Bert knocked up for me. So we'll see how they do. I'm also going to fish uh, the oil attractant on one rod and uh, just bear bait on the other rod. And we're going to see if it makes a difference. We're going to count the bites today. Um, in theory, it should make a difference, but we're going to see. We're going to test it out. Uh, yeah, these scissors... They're on the website, I think, or they will be. I mean, they're incredible. He uses them to cut his nets. He's been using them for months and they're still sharp. Obviously, we'd be cutting bits of line for rigs and that all the time, you know, and the, the standard scissors you buy from the shop after a while, they do blunt out, especially when you're using braid, things like that. I mean, these cut through fiberglass, like netting, nylon, anything, and they just, they just don't get don't get blunt so if you go on there grab a pair because they're the best scissors in the world as Trevor would say um, yeah anyway on that note <laughs> big up the scissors and they're orange as well by the way so when you're on the rocks yeah night time drop them bosh fucking easy find them boys easy right then what have we got in the old rig wallet If you don't have a rig wallet, get one. Boom. Rig's ready to go. 
on your Saturday nights and Friday nights instead of going out on the beers, make yourself a few rigs. Now, I'm only joking, guys. It's Saturday today, so I'm doing a day session. It's meant to get a bit raining tonight, so you will find me in the pub somewhere. I am English. Not saying that all English people drink, but it's sort of tradition on Saturdays. <laughs> right then. Clip this one up. Put them on there, boy. You know what? Get us a bit of bait out. These bags as well, they're on the website. Oh, ideal. You can fit a lot of bait in there. I mean, sometimes I go on like 72 hour trips. And uh, like I'll go Friday, come back Monday. And uh, yeah, keeps the bait fresh, frozen. Uh, just throw an ice pack or two in there. And then just take out the bait you're using at the at time and uh, yeah, it should stay frozen. Ideal, banging. So here we go. We've got, I think we've got, yeah, we've got some mackerel and squid, and we've got, by the looks of it, some herring and squid too. So, big up Bertie for these. Still solidly frozen though. So <laughs> alright, they will defrost today, hopefully. But that's just how we roll. Right, so again, guys, hook in the base of the bait. Oh, it's frozen. Right. Hook proud. Bait elastic. I keep my bait elastic and scissors in the top pocket of the bag. It's ideal. Right. Da -da 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 -da. Whip. Watch me, Nay Nay. Get jiggy with it. Get that, get it done. Boy, get it done. I know my concentration face is beautiful. You can blame my mum. Boosh. Bosh. Right. Obviously, panel work. I know you've all seen it before, but there are some new viewers. So, big up all the new subs as well. Thank you very much. I feel like when we get to 300, we'll maybe do some bait voucher giveaways or something like that. Little, little comment. Comment, subscribe and like and all that kind of jargon. Right. And there you have it, guys. Simple. Keep it simple. Pulley panel. Lovely bit of bait. I'm probably going to fish six ounce leads today because the, the tide does rip through here when it starts to pull. And yeah, so anyway, we're gonna belt these out. I'll bring you back if we catch a fish. If I don't catch a fish, probably bring you back anyway for a chat. Because I am down here on my own, so I feel a bit lonely. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you in a bit. Sorry about the wind, uh, as picked up. A bit chilly now. Um, Got to bring the rod, uh, left hand rod in. Quickly check it. First cast has been out about 20 minutes now, so um, see what the damage is. See if we've got a lot of crabs or not. So yeah, just quickly reel, reel this one in. <clears throat>
as you can see guys it's always worth checking especially after the first cast that there's been absolutely munched by the crabs so we'll be changing the baits every 15 to 20 minutes um, obviously where we're fishing it's going to be home to a lot of edibles spiders lobsters but um, I did chuck an old lead out there and uh, reeled it just dragged it along the floor give it a few turns and it seems quite smooth out there and then about 30 35 yards out that's when you start hitting the rocks so i'm only casting about 50 yards so just past the rough um into the smooth sand so hopefully with any luck any fish that are in the rocks or held up eating the baits will come across this and we'll have a fish on so uh Right, I'm going to bait this one up now, put it back out. If we get a fish, I'll bring it back. See you in a bit. Right, guys. Just give you a quick tour. While the old uh, baits are soaking. I have got, I, every time I leave my rods, I do put my bait ratchets on. If I'm using a multiplier, which I don't use very often because I'm not very good with one, I'll put the ratchet on. If not, I've got bait runners on my uh, fixed balls. So obviously, this is, I'll take you up to the top so you can see all the way down. But this is long quarry. So when you're down here, fishing's comfortable. It's really flat. Obviously, when it's windy, it's windy. You can't really do anything about it because it's quite an open rock. Um, but yeah, so, as well guys i wasn't joking i was joking in the car um it really is really steep um i got halfway down today and it was quite slippery so i was in two minds whether to actually come down here or not so obviously this is the path in which you come down and that there is the steep cliff that you have to sort of maneuver your way down so if you're going to come down here rods and a rucksack really because you do need your hands to help you down um, right, so once you get down to the bottom, obviously this is to your left, and then as you go round, it opens up, I'm fishing just over there, and you can walk all the way, I don't know if you can see, but there are people camping over there, I don't know whether they live here or if they're fishing, but it is a big flat rock, um, yeah. And then you can fish, there's about seven or eight different spots that open up on the rocks that you can fish. It's comfortable. The ground is about, if you cast over 40 yards, you won't lose any gear, which is another bonus. Um, but yeah, other than that, this is a uh, long quarry. I mean, I might not catch any fish and you might not even want to come here, but if you do, just be careful. Try not to come here when it's been raining, unless you're an experienced angler, or rock climber, or whatever you want to call yourselves. Because you know, part of the thrill of fishing is getting there. <laughs> rock marks are my favorite. Because generally, when you get to the bottom, there's hardly any people there. Because not a lot of people are stupid enough to wake up at five in the morning, go climbing down cliffs just to do a bit of fishing. But, we do what we love, don't we? You know? So, um, yeah. That's Long Quarry. Um, hopefully we can get you some fish. If not, I mean, it is what it is. It's a beautiful place. It's nice to be here. Do you know what I mean? It's just somewhere. Fishing is just an escape, really, from reality. Well, that is, it is for me. It's um, people that find it hard. I know people mentioned about me putting hashtags of mental health and stuff. People that find it hard to talk to other people. Like, I'm not really a talker, do you know what I mean? I'm quite a positive guy. But when I do get down or whatever, I go fishing, do you know? I just go out. And it, you don't have to go fishing, you can do anything you want. Some people like playing football, I don't know, making music. And even if you're not good at it, just go out and do it, innit? Do you know what I mean? And you can always bring a few friends. And believe it or not, when you're doing something different and you're not thinking about day-to-day -day life you can have some quite deep conversations with your friends on the rocks believe it or not so and 
if that's anything to go by, the last couple of the years, I've had a few friends sadly leave this planet, you know, and yeah, I don't want to see any more of my friends or anyone else for that matter of fact, go that way. So yeah, get out, free your mind, talk to people, do what you got to do. Anyway, I'm going to get back to this fishing lock because it would be nice to get one for the camera. <laughs> see you in a bit. Right, just had an inquiry on the left hand rod, there we go. I'm gonna have to be quick because the last one just jammed me up in the rocks. big bait so just had a nightmare <laughs> had a proper slat liner rattling away lovely bite <laughs> uh, yeah pulled into it and it was sat in the rocks um, I did manage to get all the rigging out back it definitely weren't just a snag Obviously, we are in Congreal territory, so their favourite thing to do is fight the bait and hide in the hole. leave it out there. I'll leave the bait out there. Because if it's a uh, bull ass or anything like that, they'll soon come back for it. Um, but yeah, that last bite was really weird. Literally banged straight over a big slack liner, reeled down to it, pulling away, lifted up, bang, jammed straight into a rock. So I think I left it a little bit, a little bit long. I think you can press record anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. But at least we're getting bites now, guys. So fingers crossed, it won't be a fishless video. Yeah, very strange. Right, guys. It seems to have come back. But I'm not sure whether the fish is big enough to take the hook. <laughs> bring the camera back. They just decide to listen. Very frustrating. Very, very frustrating. It was easy, everyone would do it, right? Come on, get him on the bank. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reel it in. Give it a check. 
just in case it's sat on there. Fresh bait, and then we'll go again. Oh. Obviously, I'm not a professional angler or filmer, so yeah. I'm gonna throw it all in anyway. Hopefully, hopefully we can hook it. Still no fish. <laughs> but um, yeah, we're nearly at low water now, so hopefully when the tide changes and uh, the water starts to pull back and the tide starts ripping, Hopefully, we'll be able to bag us some fish. If not, I'm still enjoying myself, isn't it? Myself? Ourselves? I don't know. <laughs> Lost the trail of thought there. Right, so... <laughs> usually, when I'm fishing, I bring a rag or a Mrs. Tea towel, <laughs> and then I'll just buy some more later on in the week. So today, I didn't bring one. So, as you all know, if you fish, if you don't, basically, when you're binding the bait up, it does get a bit messy. Your hands get covered in fish and uh yeah it's not too nice especially when you're touching your reels and your rods and all that kind of stuff so uh i've just been wiping it in my jacket as you do typical man and then uh right <laughs> right next to me i've just realized there's a big pool of water <laughs> so i could have just washed my hands in there but no i decided to stink of fish so next time obviously use you've got to use my brain but um i'm contemplating on putting on uh, maybe a small turk flapper or something just to see if we can hook those smaller bites just to see what they are um but i am quite stubborn and i do like the five foot pulley panel with the five o's they normally catch everything but it would be nice to land one of these little bites to see what it is. Um, so yeah, other than that, that's it. Oh, I want to say thanks as well, you know, for all the positive comments and the views and that. Obviously, when you start something new or you decide to post yourself online, <laughs> uh, it can be quite daunting. But um, but yeah, all the positive feedback and that's been really nice. I'd just like to thank you for that. The tips as well, the little tips, all welcome. Do you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not one of them people that think my way is the best way. So if you've got any tips or anything like that, put them out there. I might use them, I might not. <laughs> but, but yeah, they're all welcome. So yeah, thank you very much. So hopefully we will get into the fish as the tide changes. If not, it doesn't matter. We're fishing. So, on that note, I'm going to decide whether I'm going to change one of the rods over. And now all the bites have been on the left-hand rod, and that's the one I'm using the uh, bait enhancer on. As I'm fishing one without it and one with it. Um, so I think it does definitely help to add the scent, just the oil. I feel like it like creates a slick in the water or something like that. Just puts them on the bait a bit quicker. Before the crabs get to it but um yeah i have been getting every time i've been reeling in i'm against like half the bait's been eaten by crabs and stuff so obviously making it a bit harder because the fish can't find it but yeah we'll see fingers crossed we get a fish if not i might change the tactics up a little bit but yeah well i'm gonna grab a coffee now and a few cakes. Thanks to the lovely wife for making me a uh, mega pat lunch today. I have been fishing for about three or four hours and I'll probably do like another three or four and then climb back up the cliff just before it gets dark because 
there's nothing worse than trying to climb up there in the dark with all your gear <laughs> especially when it's wet and slippery so hopefully it stays dry dries out a little bit and it'll make it a bit easier to get to the top yeah if i get a fish probably even if i don't get a fish i'll bring it back anyway to do the outro um yeah fish on fish on john see you in a bit <laughs> right so I've managed to land the problem. <laughs> so obviously the fishing is quite hard because the baits are being eaten. Um, so most of you will know that are watching what this is, but a lot of you won't. This is a spider crab. As you can see, they're not small. So they absolutely smash the baits. Um, it's all closed up at the moment, but uh, probably because it feels a bit threatened. Uh, they get a lot bigger than this as well. So imagine like a thousand of these out on the bottom. As soon as your bait's in there, they're just clearing the hooks. So uh, yeah, unfortunately they do, uh, they are a bit of a pest, but as always, they are beautiful creatures. So I will get this one back shortly. It's a shame it won't open up, but yeah, nah, he's not coming. But, uh, yeah. hopefully we don't keep catching these all day. But yeah, there's a spider crab. It is that time of year where they come to the, come in close to the shore, eat every angler's bait. And bait is expensive, <laughs> so it can be a bit annoying. Right, we'll get this back. At least we know there is some life out there. And yeah. Absolute peach. If we, get, if we get one three times the size, we'll take it home. We'll do a catch and cook. Uh -oh. Right. See you in a bit. <laughs> oh. Right, guys. Casting. It's a big part of fishing. A lot of people will just do like an overhead lob, which is fine. That's what I do, 50% of the fishing. When I've got a little bit of space, I do like to try and get into the butt section. Um, the way I do it, I do get into it and I can probably hit about 150 to 180 yards. That's with a fixed one. You'll see a lot of people use multipliers and they do a full pendulum. Um, but you can crack off quite a few times <laughs> if you haven't practiced. And anyone fishing to your right, that leg comes round at some speed. So, you know, don't obviously don't do it. Do it in an open space and when there's no one else fishing really. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go through how I do it and uh, yeah, hopefully you can get a few extra yards on your cast. Obviously the way I do it, I still get into the butt section a little bit, not as much as a pendulum. But um, yeah, it's just, just the way I've found to put a little bit of distance on my cast for when I've got a lot of space. Here goes nothing. Crack off Connor. Right, so. Obviously, you want to get a good drop on your lead. I usually go to about the same as the lower eye on my rod. A lot of people as well will have the reel at the bottom so they can really push into the push into the midsection of the rod to get an extra bend. And it is quite comfortable as well when you're doing a pencil cast so the reel at the bottom. Don't know why, but it is. So grab your line, press your finger against the rod. So it doesn't slip, bail arm over, and away you go. So what I like to do is point my foot to where I want to cast, turn around. So most people that do the pendulum will push the lead out, they'll swing it back behind their heads, and then turn around and launch it. I tend to swing the lead out left, bring it round right in like a loop, so it's like the back end of a pendulum cast, and then send it out. So here goes nothing. So out to the right. <laughs> left. Right. Left, bring it in, swoop it round. And there you go. Obviously it's quite hard to see on camera, but it's, oh, there we go, we're at the bottom. 
literally push it out left, bring it back in. As I bring it in, I sort of flick the tip of the rod, like scoop it. The leg comes behind me, goes around in a big loop. And as the lead's on the outside of the tip, turn around and hit it. And uh, yeah, I found that that puts an extra, maybe 40 to 50 yards on my cast, rather than the overhead thump. So yeah, if you take anything from that, take it. If not, carry on how you do your fishing. There's probably a name for that cast. I don't know if it actually is. It's just something I've sort of put into practice and learned to get a bit more distance. Right, so let's try and get some more fish and not, <laughs> and not spider crabs. Right then guys, it's been emotional. <laughs> Obviously, we've had some nice bites, missed them. No fish, but the old sunshine has come out. This is the famous last cast, so if I catch anything on this one, I will just quickly throw it in at the end. If not, thank you all again the subs and the views much appreciated also guys if any of you want to see see me fish any venues on the south devon coastline just drop a message in the bottom and uh we'll try and get out and do a little video but yeah other than that i'm gonna make my way back up the mountain in a minute and uh yeah I'll bring you back for the next one in a bit. <laughs>